Hello and welcome, my name is Axel K and today we're revisiting Rush Warrior from Forged in the Barrens. Rush Warrior is all about using your Rush minions to take over the board and to trade efficiently and then to end the game with a strong board with cards like Troublemakers and Alexstrasza. For your mulligan you want to go for Athletic Studies, Imprisoned Ganarg, Far Watch Post, Harbor Scamp and Bumper Car. You can even keep a Sword Eater or a Tent Treasure if you curve out really well. The Tent Treasure can change your mulligan a lot if you find it. A super strong mulligan is Imprisoned Ganarg, Bumper Car and Tent Treasure. Imprisoned Ganarg is a demon and you play it on turn 1, then you play Bumper Car on 2 which is a mech and on turn 3 your Ganarg will wake up and you can play the 10 treasure right away. You can do a similar play if you're on the coin, but instead you coin Harbor Scamp on 1, play Bumper Car on 2 and then 10 treasure on 3. Rush Warrior is more complicated than it looks at first glance so there are a couple of things to keep in mind. Always wait for at least turn 5 before you play conditioning. You want it to hit rank 2 since it's gonna double the stats that it buffs your hand with. You can make your hand bigger before you play conditioning by sacrificing Bumper Cards to get the tokens in your hand, or you could go for a big ringmaster Watley to draw a bunch of cards. Your weapon damage is important against greedy quest decks. Try to not overlap your weapons especially when it comes to the Ganarg, so hitting right away with a weapon is a good idea. And then you save the last swing for later. It's important to not burn one of the weapon charges without using it. You can also set up some huge turns with Playmaker. You can play her together with Bumper Car to really refill your hand with tokens. You can also pair her with Parade Leader to both multiply and buff your rush minions. And try to keep the board clean so you can hit your opponent with a big trouble maker on turn 8. And that's about it for Rush Warrior. Buff your hand, trade with your Rush cards and finish the game with a big troublemaker or Alexstrasza. Thank you guys so much for watching. I've had a blast playing some good old fashioned board based Hearthstone this week. I have some great plans for next week. I think there might be a patch coming so we're gonna have a ton of fun with that. Thank you guys so much for all the support. The likes and the comments always makes my day. I really love chatting about Hearthstone with you guys. Remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel but most importantly, enjoy the games. Welcome to some Rush Warrior. I think this is a really good deck. I think it's super, like, it's a super sleeper just like the Death Rattle Demon Hunter. I've been having a ton of fun just going back and playing those Fortune the Barons decks. I mean, these are a little tinkered. I mean, uh, there are some new cards in here and it makes the deck run a little smoother, which is nice. So, I just wanted to throw everything here. I just want a good start. And getting a Pack Mule in the beginning hand is not a smooth start, but we'll take those. Okay, we got the bumper car, which is nice. So bumper car plus pirate is always nice. So uh, on turn one, we probably just go bumper car. This deck is actually surprisingly good at dealing with brutes. Um, now you gotta think a little. Do we go bumper car or do we go parade leader? So going parade leader here could just kind of spiral us out of control. But because he just want, wants to draw, right? He could... I think we're going for it. He could kill it with like... Um, um, get to attack and uh, then coin hero power, I guess. But I think I'm taking my chances. Like, this is a brute demon hunter, so I just want to punch. Uh, he could also go, I guess, like, uh, lifesteal for one if he had it, but I don't think so. So next turn we do an awkward bumper car, but it is what it is. It's still gonna have a ton of damage, which is nice. And the good thing about- yes, actually, this worked out perfectly. But the good thing about Sword Eater is that we can just hit him in the face with the weapon. So we're kind of good against these slow uh, slow um, decks. So yeah, we go Bumper Car first and then we go Stage Dive. And then we hope to get something really nasty. Like a huge Tent Thresher that's coming down next turn. Especially since it's gonna buff... This is gonna buff his attack, which is really good. So we can go even crazier. Or we could just go for the Sword Eater just to get that sword online to start punching him in the face. Um... This Tent Thresher could be good to save in hand, just to deal with Brutes. Actually, if he plays a Brute now, if he goes really hard into, um, into like, yeah, drawing cards and uh, he gets a Brute, then we can just deal with it. But I think what we have to do in this matchup is uh, we really have to um, play our hand-buffed cards. Because uh, if he shuffles them in, then they're gonna lose their buff. But yeah, so we can deal with this. Too bad it's gonna die though, but it is what it is. At least we, uh, we're we not getting too screwed by this. And that's one of his brutes. Now he has one more that he, he can copy it, but still, it's good to know that he has only one more. And uh, then we have to look out for that Lion's Frenzy. He's probably hitting this, right? Uh, next turn, we're going Sword Eater, I think. Sword Eater is another card that's good. To, to use to deal with the Brute, because 7 health, it's kind of easy to, to get something with 4 attack. 
We also have to think here, like, um, with the imprisoned Ganargs and the Sword Eaters, you don't want their weapons to overlap. You can play them both on the same turn. Which is fine. But then you have to make sure that you hit with the weapon. He's getting close to Kurtris. Oh my god. I think this guy is gonna quest complete on one. Or on one, on five. Yeah. Because he didn't hit. Okay. We can make that hit awkward by playing Sword Eater. 10 Thresher is really nice here, but I don't want to play the 10 Thresher because... Um, because if he plays another Brute, I want this to run into the Brute. So we're playing the Pirates. We're playing the Gnarg to get that weapon back, and then we start swinging. So we still have one more swing. We could go uh, 10 Thresher and uh, Jawbreaker for his uh, Brutes if he gets one. But I think he's gonna go big, big boy Kurtris here. <gasps> ah, now he can just hero power and trade, but I think he wants to keep the Tusk Piercer, right? To draw a ton. Or maybe he gave up on the quest. So we could use our- oh wow, that's really good. I was like, we could use our weapon to clear this, but I would much rather use Runtek and like, uh, Dark Moon. I mean, this thing is gonna die, but I'm fine with it. And does the Gnarg wake up next turn? In one turn? I played it last turn. So I think we're having one weapon last turn, maybe? No. I think it's gonna work out perfectly. Which is good. And now this is buffed as well, which is really nice. Like, these can deal with, um, with a Brute. So, hopefully it won't glide us. So, we are kind of good and we're kind of bad against uh, Demon Hunter. Because we're so good at uh, dealing with his Brutes. But we get really punished by glide. Especially if you, like, do a big, like, big run tech turns. I wish this was one turn ahead. Yeah, the weapons are so good as well. Playmaker. We start off by hitting. I'm doing Playmaker and I'm playing the 10th Thresher. This might come back to bite me later, but I'm feeling like a glide is coming. Then we hit him. So if he glides me, then we can find Alex Dress, of course, but uh, I would much rather get the Troublemaker down. <laughs> I mean, we could have dealt with it, but he burned it. Okay, dude, you have Lion's Frenzy now. <gasps> or? No. Not Illigonoth, right? Ah oh, dang, I saw Orange running it with um, Illigonoth now. Now I'm scared. He's gonna kill all of these. Okay. 18? What? Insanity. Insanity. You're in my school now. Um. Yeah. I'm gonna hit the Artificer with my sword, and then I'm gonna hope that my little boys hits the Artificers. Oh, good. Sit. Hopefully it doesn't kill it. I mean, that's both of his fell screen blasts, so I think we're just kind of taking this guy to the late game. I'm not sure what else he has. He could probably get something out of Illidari's studies, or maybe he's going for a big Lion's Frenzy, but... I don't think he's gonna be able to do it. Oh, so that's... Oh, it's another Moarg. He he has to go for the um, Illigonoth. This survives. Next turn we... There we go! <laughs> I got so nervous there! Woo! <laughs> Alright. I think we can deal with a rogue. Oh, that's this... This is pretty good. Mmm... 
I mean, we throw away the Sword Eater because we want to draw it with the Scamp anyways. You can get unlucky and draw the Scamp with the Scamp. But we'll take it. Ugh, you don't want to see a Pack Mule in your hand. Like, in your beginning hand. That's fine, I think we're still gonna coin it. We go, coin, Scamp. If it draws the Scamp, then we just play the other one, right? This is not quest, this is, uh, what's it called? It's poison. I think we just break a lot of, um, a lot of poison rogues noses, especially when we have so many, um, so many taunts. Like we can go encumbered pack fuel next turn. I, he's probably just not gonna do anything, he's just looking for a weapon here. I think that is why he traded. If he had a weapon, he would probably have sent that face. Now we can go with the other scamp and find the sword eater. I like that. Now we have so many taunts. So many taunts and so much damage that we're just gonna... Just gonna delete him. <laughs> What's going on in this meta? Everybody's playing different, different things. So he's like a shuffle rogue. So this might be harder than I thought. We're definitely killing this with um, our Sword Eater the next turn. Uh, Far Watch Post is so good. If I can get it behind a taunt, that would be better. Hmm. So I don't want to play the Watch Post here. I'm gonna go off curve, which sucks, but we're just going with a Parade Leader. I guess we could have played the Pack Mule. That might have been better. Yeah, he's he got all the good shuffling cards. So what we can do here, like... What we can do is we can just drop a pack mule together with a far watch post, which is really good. But I think I would rather get the sword down. And then we trade with the sword here. We want to save our minions a little bit here. I still think we can deal with the boards, because, like, if he draws the, uh, three threes, it's kind of fine, because we are so good at just, just dealing with a board. I mean, we're kind of good at doing everything, like, this is a really good deck. Okay. I don't think this matters too much, we're taking this with our face. <gasps> oh my. Okay, so we're going kind of low. I want to go Watley a little bit. Oh, we have to take this with our face, which sucks. Hmm. I want to go Watchtower soon, though. But I think we have to go Sword Eater. Or we could go Playmaker and Watchtower. Because it's going to be hard for him, because he needs to clear one of them. But we're taking this with... The face, which really hurts. I think going Playmaker with Watchtower is good here. He could kill them with like SI, like the deal 3 to a minion. But I think we're still... I'm doing this so I can curve out. I don't want to go Pack Mule and Far Watch Post. It's a little bit too weak. But I guess Mancrick dies to them. I think I'd rather go Playmaker here. Playmaker, Watch Post. He's gonna kill the Watch Post, but I get to hit one card and I think I get to kill Mancrick. And just having a Playmaker out can actually like start swinging the game in our favor. Next turn, I think we have to go Sword Eater and Pack Mule. Oh my. Is that the Death Rattle? Yeah. Okay, good. This might be healing for us later. And now we can't kill off this, at least. Maybe I should have played something else. Okay, it doesn't get to hit, which is good. I don't want to throw too much of my uh, weapons into his minions, because uh, I, I, like, I don't want to die. <laughs> Simple as that. But I think Alexstrasza will hit our face, so we have to keep that in mind. And it's good to kind of make it's kind of good to start planning for that now so we don't get uh, too confused and just start thinking about oh i just want to kill him with uh, alexstrasza oof shuffling 
So I need to find me some rush cards. Oh, Ronthak, that's a good rush card. Good for me. I think we're keeping the weapon here. We might kill him in two turns with uh, Alexstrasza. Next turn we're playing Troublemaker though. So this one dies, it summons the other one, it hits. Oh my. I mean, unless we die? Is the Troublemaker best here? Next turn we just kill him with uh, Alexstrasza, so we just want to survive. We could go Playmaker and 10 Thresher. I think that's better. Because this is just to survive. And hit my minion. Good. And now we have Alex. It's 8 damage. Why did I think it was 9? <laughs> okay, dude. We might have to go Troublemaker. I mean, because you can't... I mean... I mean... Not Alex, right? No. No. It's so much damage. That's a pretty cool deck, right? It looks like it's not the best. Because we have Alex Strasa, the Deathbinder. <laughs> so good. Rush Warrior is actually really nice. Alright, thank you guys for watching. Remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you soon. Peace.